Hey everybody, this is Peter B. And I want to show you my last pickup of the year. And what you're going to see is the 1887 H804-21 Tobin Lithograph Color Baseball Trade Cards. There were 10 cards in the set and it was called the Cadillac of the baseball advertising trade cards. They feature humorous baseball scenes with generic players that slightly look like the real player depicted. And unlike other comic baseball cards from this, baseball trade cards from this era, these cards have the actual player's name and five of the 10 cards feature future Hall of Famers. Um, very nice set. Let me get my iPad back in. Very nice set. Um, very expensive. I uh, looked on eBay right now and there's none available. They're, they're I wanna use the word scarce. And when you find them, they're very expensive. Like I said, it's called the Cadillac of the Baseball Advertising Trade Cards. And this is on my iPad right here. And this shows uh, Boston King Kelly. If you notice, Boston spelt wrong. I think that was done on purpose because these are supposed to be comical. And, uh, oops, I got healthcare calling me. Sorry about that. So these are trade cards. You see in the upper right, uh, this card was given away at Max Stadler and Company, Reliable Clothiers, and where are they? New York. There would be other advertise, other uh, places stamped there. And most of the cards are blank back, though sometimes advertisers also stamped their name on the back. So this is what the card looks like, a nice uh, rectangular card. And on the bottom, it says the flower of the flock, our own Kelly, uh, referring to King Kelly. So uh, that's one of the 10 cards and one of the five Hall of Famers. I just picked up six of the cards, six of the 10. And they were inexpensive. And there's a reason. Because someone cut the image. Real nice job. I mean, whoever cut this had real nice skills with the scissor. Uh, Cut right along the outline of the player. Even got the bill of the hat. You can see where this was stamped uh, right in front of King Kelly's catching hands. So, like I said, the six of the six cards I got are all trimmed, but they're very nicely trimmed. Let me uh, take this out of the protector. And you can hear my cat again. Whenever I do a video, he has to announce the world that he's here too. So here's the card. Very nicely cut. And on the back, this one did have a back stamped by a druggist in Kansas. Looks like F.H. Turn. So like I said, these were inexpensive, which is why I bought them because I'd probably never be able to afford the card uncut. They would probably get greater than authentic because they are authentic. So that's my first one, King Kelly, uh, depicted as a Boston bean eater. 
He was sold from Chicago to Boston in 1887. So I don't know the date of the sale, but these cards are also from 1887, so they would have been made after the sale. He was sold to Boston in 1887 for $10,000. And uh, he was nicknamed $10,000 Kelly. He was a Darren bass dealer that inspired a popular song called Slide Kelly Slide. Probably the second best 19th century um, player. Maybe Orlando would put him first. But uh, in general, he's considered probably the second best. Very good player. He was a catcher. And the next one I got is Hall of Famer. Cap Anson. Cap Anson was the first player to get 3,000 hits and considered the greatest 19th century player. And he's depicted on the Chicago White Stockings. So there's Kelly. Once again, uh, the reason I bought this is because, A, it's they're cheap, and, two, the person did a real nice job. I mean, he went right around the trees, his arms, his hat, real nice. So this says, oh, come off, <clears throat> and it says Anson for Cap Anson. And if you look close at his hand, you can see a partial stamp. It looks like L-A-R. So this is Cap Anson of the Chicago White Stockings. Next one I got is Hall of Famer Tim Keefe. Let me bring that down a little bit. Oh. Tim Keefe played for the New York Giants and he has over 300 victories. Or this is depicted him on a Giants. I think he also played for Boston prior or after. He has he has 300 victories and is a Hall of Famer. And this one says, "Will you have it?" Question mark. Tim Keefe. Now I know in the early days of baseball, the batter would show where he wanted high low inside outside i don't know if that was in play in 1887 but i'm sure that comic line has to do with that and once again his feet are very cut out nicely even the shadow on his left foot the nose so there were his mustache they were very nicely done cut out so they don't bother me as much that they're not the full uh, rectangular card. And like I said, it's the only way I'm going to own these. So that's Hall of Famer Tim Keefe, New York Giants. The other Hall of Famers in the set are um, Mickey Welch which is also a New York Giants pitcher, and Dan Brothers, who was a big first-time, big-hitting first baseman for the Detroit Wolverines. I don't, I don't have those two Hall of Famers. Now, these are the non-Hall Hall of Famers. This is uh, Paul Hines, and it says, An Anxious Moment. Looks like he's determined whether he wants to steal or not which is why it's an anxious moment. He is depicted with the Washington Nationals. Paul Hines, when he played with the Providence Grays, became the first Triple Crown winner. He's also um, considered to have the first unassisted triple play, although the rules were slightly different then, and some people count it, some people don't. And he had a career of over 2,000 hits. 
So this is Paul Hines. And like I said, all the other comic baseball trade cards, they feature kind of similar looking players with the big heads, but they don't reference any actual player. And some even have babies playing, which is why this one's the considered the best of the type of cards. So that's Paul Hines, Washington Nationals. Next one I have is uh, Ed Andrews. He played eight seasons as an outfielder for the Philadelphia Quakers. And his, uh, his says, go it, old boy. Andrews, Eddie Andrews. And you see a slight stamp on his neck, the advertising trade stamp. And that's what these were used for. These were given out at those establishments. And the final one I have is uh, Charlie Ferguson. Charlie Ferguson played for the Philadelphia Quakers. He uh, played four seasons in Philadelphia and had, he was a pitcher and had an impressive 99 and 64 record. But in 1888, a year after these cards were made, at 25 years old, he died of typhoid pneumonia. So he was off to a good start and then uh, taken away by a sickness. This is Charlie. This says not onto it, Charlie Ferguson. And that's the last one on my set. Uh, there's also two other Hall of Famers I don't have. Uh, Jack Glasscock, who's a very good shortstop and may someday be in the Hall of Fame. He was a real good player. And uh, he played for the Indianapolis Hoosiers. And Jim... McCormick, another pitcher, and he played for the Pittsburgh Alleghenies. So that's six of the 10 card set from 1887, the H804-21 Tobin Lithograph Color Baseball. And it's the Cadillac of Baseball Advertising Trade Cards. So I uh, hope you liked it. And like I said, I, of course I would rather have the uncut versions, but these were done so well and it's something affordable. So keep your eye out. If I see uh, any of the four I don't have, I'll be uh, picking up those. Well, thank you for watching. And this is my last uh, video before Christmas. So I hope everyone out there Happy holidays and Merry Christmas. Goodbye.